Welcome back to the Ibitress YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful rose turban or scarfinator. It's very simple to make. If this is what you want to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this video. Thank you. So what you need to make a rose scarfinator is the fabric of your choice. I'll be using a dull face fabric for this. But you can also use crepe, lycra or any fabric you want. I actually like lycra for this ball. This is what I have at the time so I'll be using this. Okay. So now I folded my fabric into two. This is on fold. This is the fold part. You can see it's folded. And the length I used in folding this is the length is 38 inches. Okay. So I have 38 inches. Let me just shift the camera so that we can see. Okay, so this is 38 inches by this is around 13 and a half it's not up to 13 and a half this is the left of fabric this is around 13 and a quarter so i'm folding 38 inches by 13 and a quarter the 38 inches is on fold remember okay so now to start my cutting the first thing i'll do is to fold this over by the 13 and a half inches so i'm folding this into two and then this edge that's the, the fat part that is not folded I'm going to measure I'm going to measure 4 inches okay from here remember it's not folded into 2 that's like 4 1, 2, 3, 4 not the part that is that will become folded now but the part that is open so I'll be measuring 4 inches downwards like this and then on the other side here I measure 10 inches like this so 10 inches like this and here 4 inches downward so this side is the part that will be using to tie the scarf so it doesn't need to be really bold like that that's why I just want to narrow it down and then I'm going to rule it like this okay so now I've ruled it and you can see it's just a slant line so the next thing for me now is to cut this half. So I've cut it out. Now I'm going to open it up back. Okay. So this is what it's looking like. You can see that it is slanted like this. This the M ply part is no longer as bold as the 13 and a half inches that we started with. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to work on this part, this folded part. Here I'll be measuring two inches downward, two or two and a half inches. Okay, so I'm measuring two inches. I remember the ten inches that we used here to join our folding part, which is the ten inches. You can measure it, but I can still see it because of the cut that I have here. So this is ten inches. So the next thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using a curved ruler. I'll be using a curved ruler to curve it from the 2 inches I marked downwards to the 10 inches in because I don't want it to be straight. If you don't have a curved ruler, you can use your free hand. Okay. So, after curving it like this, I'm going to cut it out. And that is all the, the cutting I'm going to be doing on the scarf part so now we move to the rows okay okay now that we've cut it we'll go over to the same machine and sew it the first joining i'll be doing i'll just notch this place the first joining i'll be doing is to sew this together and then hem all the other parts so that the rough edges will not be showing we have enough fabric you can cut two of this and then use it to turn each other so that it will be neatly finished and it will give your scarf more weight so i'm going to set this aside now and then work on my rows okay so for the rows i just got long strips of fabric i have like three or four of them and each one is each one is 60 inches long and around three inches width so i have like three of that if it's not enough i'm going to cut more i'll just join them together to form a long strip for me okay this is what we'll be using to pleat it and so from the base of the rose i just pick my fabric 
and then I'm going to fold it into four like I want to cause a flare so now that I'm folding it into four I'll take my tape measure and then measure four inches round from the apex I'll be cutting two of these and then use it to turn each other okay now I've matched four inches and then I'm going to cut it out depending on how you want your how big you want your wrist to be you can do four and a half or three or three and a half you don't want it to be okay so this is what it's looking like I'm going to cut another one of these then use it to turn each other okay now I've turned two of these you can see I'm pinning them right side to right side and then I'm going to sew it round okay so now at the same time my long strips I'm going to join them together to form just one long strip and then I'll take it to the sewing machine close them together like this and then start to form my pleats so that it will be easy for me to place around the circle so I just form my pleats so that they can be ready made just like this and then I'm going to bring it back to show us how I'm going to place it on the circle okay, so this is the circle I just place them right side facing right side then I sew it around so now I'm just going to try and make an incision at the center here so that I can cut it out okay so I'm just going to cut it here and then use that tiny hole to bring out to turn it around If it's not enough, you can cut it out a bit more and then bring it up. it out through the hole you can go ahead and take it to the ironing table and give it a good press okay so after turning it out now you can iron it but this is just a tutorial so i'll just go ahead and continue now i'm going to fold this into four like i want to measure so what i'm trying to do is to get the mid point the middle part and i'm going to rub chalk on it okay so this is the middle part now so now I'm going to, going to try to create like a spiral effect where I'll be putting my I'm using my free hand for this so you just try to make it as close together as possible so it is on this spiral that I'm going to place my pleats so I hope you can see what I'm doing I'm trying to create like rows here so I'll continue till I get to the end part. Okay, now so I filled everywhere with the spirals. Like I said, the long strip that I cut, I went ahead to take it to the sewing machine and then I made pleats out of it. So if you are doing this, you should make sure this raw edges is neat. You can either turn it out or weave it before you make your pleats. But this is a tutorial, so I just so this is the first layer now. I'm just going to place my pleat and then take it to the sewing machine now and start sewing it round like this, following the lines that I already have. So the essence of the line is just for it to guide me. And then I'll continue placing it and sewing like that till I fill up the whole circle. So I've started filling it up. I just thought to show us. I'm through with the first layer. I've sewn it. I can see what it's looking like. So now I'm going to continue sewing it like this into the second layer till I fill up the whole space. Okay. Okay, so I filled everything up now, up to the mid, tiny part. So for it to be neatly finished, I just want to use this glass one. Just I will try and place it in a way that it will be nice. So after placing it like this, I'm going to go in with my thread and needle and then finish it off neatly. Okay. And we are done with the roses. So this type of rose can also be used on a sleeve, 
on an off shoulder sleeve or you can place it on any part of the dress but it's usually used for sleeves an off shoulder sleeve you have a tiny half shoulder underneath it and you just tuck it or sew it on the tiny off shoulder that you already have and your sleeve is ready it's very beautiful and it's looking this full because you can see that it's neatly finished now it's looking this full because the lines are close to each other so i'll turn it to this other side now so that we can see how i sew it so if you look at it on the other side now you can see the lines these are the lines that i followed in sewing them and they are very close to each other and consistent okay so this is what we have now i'm just going to tie this and cut it off okay now so now that the rose is done i'm just going to take the scarf i already hemmed it you can see you can also weave it if you have a serger so i hemmed it and this is what i have so the back i'm going to place it in a way that i'll see the center back easily so i know this is the center back look at it this v part where we curved remember we went down by two inches here and then we curved it up to 10 inches and then i sewed that part up as you can see okay so this is the back of it and that is what i'm taking together to see my center back so now on that center back part i'm going to place my rose on it like this and then i'll tack it with needle and thread okay so if you don't want your rose you can leave your rose place it like this and tack but if you don't want your rose looking this flat so what you can do is just take your needle and thread again and then you try to create a hole so you stuff the hole and then to make the rose to pop so what am i going to do remember when we were doing it we did we did sew it layer by layer so this first layer which is in this case can be the last layer also is what i'm going to pick i'm going to pick it and then i'm going to do a running stitches around it okay the last one alone i'm going to do a running stitches round so after doing your running stitches you just drag it like you're dragging your gathers to create like small hole like this okay so if you drag it you see what that you don't you no longer have a flat rose it's now a bit puffy so once you are dragging it you won't drag it completely you just leave this small hole and this hole you're going to stuff it with either pieces of fabric or if you have leftover foam just stuff it inside so that it can come out and bounce a bit so when i was sewing it i mentioned that it has to be closely sewn together the aim is just that if you want to go for this style that you need to drag it if it's not close together it will not be this full so it will just cut around and it will be exposing your sewing part so you need to sew it close together now i'm going to stuff this with whatever i have now and then i'm going to sew it up completely Okay, so now that I've stuffed it a bit, it's a bit hot now. I'm just going to drag it completely and then I'm going to sew it tight. Okay, I'm going to tack it in a way to close it completely. Okay, now this is what we have. You can see it. So I did not cut this off because I'm going to use it to tack it to this scarf. So now I'm just going to take the scarf, get the middle midpoint, and then tack my rose neatly on it. And we are done. So this is the midpoint. I'm just going to place the rose here and then I'm going to tack in a very neat way. So that it's not going to be showing on the outer part here. Okay, so I've tagged it to the scarf and it's ready to tie now. So I'll just take the mannequin to show us different styles we can use in styling this. You can see it's very simple to make. Just take this a try and let's know what you come up with. This is the finished work now. You can either tie it to the front or to the back. So I mean I want to tie it to the front. You just make sure you place your dough anywhere you want. It can be at the center or just a little at the side. And then you tie it 
using the rope so I'm going to tie it at the back so after tying it at the back as you can see I've tied it at the back and you bring it to the front and then style it anyhow you want you can either wrap this round the bush like this and then bring the other one also and then wrap it round and you have something like this so this is a style you can do or you can just find a place to put this you can tie it at the back and just leave this in front you can just put this behind it like this and then wrap it to the front and back if it's long enough so this is another style you can do you can try to make it like a v so by just placing this in front of a v to the front like this and then take the other one and then place it over it to give you like a v effect like this and then you tie it to the back so you just have to be creative with it depends on how creative you have you can also tie it to the back okay which means this rose will be at the back instead of the front so you just place it at the middle of your scarf like this and then you tie it at the back so once it is tied you just go to the back and then wrap tuck your ear in and then wrap your scarf around it like this I can see how beautiful and simple it is to make this so you just tie it somewhere and your scarf is ready so that is how you make your rose caffeinator it's as simple as that